right welcoming you all for the discussion on the part of the history questions of our gender studies igno paper 1 exam which we got concluded yesterday okay see at the outset let me tell you we got nearly 20 questions not nearly exactly 20 questions of the 20 questions the breakup was breakup was like this okay ancient india okay. we got this time more questions okay. medieval can nearly four questions okay. modern not that many as expected okay. we got around what here you see ancient india 1 2 3 nearly 3 4 5 6 7 okay nearly seven questions from ancient india four from medieval approximately around 11 and nine from modern right all these questions okay i wish to share with you people very difficult to answer very difficult to answer only two questions what are these two questions in you know test series c test series c question number 62 and 76 62 and 76 they are very difficult to, to answer in fact the first you are given here you have given me that same question here okay rukma by case of 1884 no one bothered about discussing this question no one bothered about dealing with this particular area okay i don't okay 90% of the boys would right have may not have answered this question candidates okay. this is the one thing and the other one is okay, there is a question 62 also okay that's equally difficult so for me okay very difficult questions are two then you know difficult it's not that you can't do okay difficult i categorize it like this very difficult which is you know very very, very difficult in sense okay you cannot answer okay not cannot in categorical sense okay but 90% find it difficult question number 62 76 okay difficult with a bit little difficulty you can answer it's not that you can't answer there are two questions again question number 71 78 of series i am discussing test series c okay series c c series in this 71 78 okay they are a bit difficult then there are moderate questions also okay i mean above average you know candidates can answer moderate questions not so difficult okay there are four there are three questions like that question number 12 74 84 question numbers 12 74 84 3 questions they are moderate okay not difficult you can answer very easy there are 13 questions i should say easy in the sense that our boys our candidates can answer them okay straight from our class notes and our, from our instruction there are questions 13 direct okay, direct 13 okay, you can answer this is how i my break up you understand with regarding the overall 20 questions of upsc right 13 questions I'm hundred percent sure. Okay, fine. Gunshot. You can do it more okay, than thirteen. Okay, but you know definitely you can answer thirteen without any problem. Right. Now to begin with the first question here, what that is stated here in the context of Indian history, the Rukma Bai case of eighteen eighty four revolved around. it revolved around what rukma bai 
was already an educated lady. The problem, she was made to marry without her consent before she got maturity. Okay. Rukma Bai refused to go to her husband okay. for the reasons age gap and you know literacy and all that. She is highly educated. So it is not the question of woman's right to gain education. She is already educated. Age of consent, definitely. Without her consent, she has been made to marry. Then restitution of conjugal rights. Conjugal rights problem for her husband. Okay. So he filed the case asking the court to decide whether you know, she should come back to him or not. The plea was that she should come back to him. Whereas Rukmabai was not willing. So the problem here is alternatives of two and three are justified here. The Rukmabai case of 1884 revolved around age of consent and restitution of conjugal rights. So answer is two and three and B stands as the right answer. No problem here. Right. Then go to the next question. What is the next question? Indigo cultivation in India declined by the beginning of the 20th century because of because of see the alternatives, peasant resistance to the oppressive conduct of planters. Right, had been going on, you know, my dear, in history from 18th century, there's a system of advances. Right. This is a system of advances in the cultivation of indigo. We call it Tinkatiya. Right. There are revolts by the peasants. Okay. There are revolts by the peasants. You see the most popular indigo rebellion, 1858, 1860. Right. After that, also indigo being cultivated. Don't say that after indigo rebellion 1860, cultivation of indigo ended. No. Even after that continuation, it continued. Okay. You see Mahatma Gandhi, he went to, you know, Champaran, Bihar, 1917. You mean India was cultivated then also? Yes, that's the reason why he had been there. So the first one here, peasant resistance to the oppressive conduct of the planters. There was resistance. And at the same time, you know, people are also, peasantry are also, cultivating indigo. Okay. So that is not the cause here. It's unprofitability in the world market because of new inventions. Okay. Gradually, you see indigo cultivation, indigo crop cultivation, it lost its relevance. It's lost its importance. It's a gradual. Right? Particularly after 1917, when Gandhi's, you know, Champaran Satyagraha was conducted. Afterwards, you don't see indigo cultivation conducted. I mean, indigo cultivation carried. The reason here was, okay, it's unprofitability. Okay. People found it unprofitable. Why? Because in the world market, new inventions entered. What are the new inventions, my dear? In the world market, you have synthetic dyes. Synthetic dye. Indigo itself is dying. When you have synthetic dyes that work out very cheaply, okay, and you know within short span also you can develop them, then indigo cultivation, okay, people found it more favorable. So the right answer here is B is the right answer. It's unprofitability in the world market because of new inventions. New invention here, synthetic dyes were being invented. C and D, look at these alternatives also. National leaders opposition to the cultivation of indigo. Yes, our leaders opposed. Gandhi opposed it, you remember. Okay. The, but that's not the cause. Okay. It's not that Gandhi led a movement that indigo cultivation got stopped. Right? It's because it is unprofitable. Got the point. Government control over the planters. Never government exercised any control. As and when problem arises, then only government exercises control. So, 
A, C, D. These are not the answers. Right answer is B. Right. Next question is what? With reference to the history of India, Ulgulan or Great Tumlut is the description of which of the following events? Okay, I told you in the class, anyone can answer this question. Very simple. Ulgulan, okay, the most popular tribal movement. Okay, remember, I told you Santal Rebellion, okay, Munda Rebellion, one of the most important revolts, Munda Rebellion of Birasa against Christian missionary activities. Okay. Birsa, by birth a Vaishnavite, converted into Christianity. Birsa started a movement called Sons of the Soil Movement. Right? That is called Ulgulan. A Vaishnavite converted into Christianity. Now his fight was what for, was for what? Okay. His fight was for freedom of faith. Are you understanding? Freedom of faith. Okay. I am a Vaishnavite. Okay. And I shall have the right to decide whether I shall remain as a Vaishnavite or a Christian. Get the point. Sons of the soil movement. Okay. There must be freedom. Freedom and liberty for the tribes. Mundas. Understand? In every sphere of life. Freedom and liberty. That is what is called Ulgulan. I don't know whether you remember this or not. I also told you, Versa founded a new cult. Cult of Singa Bonga. A new cult of worshipping God, Singa Bonga. Right. So, Ulgulan, it is about Versa Munda's revolt 1899 to 1900. Okay. Great Tonglut is the description of which of the following. You don't have any reference to that. Okay. In 1857, Mopla Rebellion, Indigo Revolt. You know, 1857 revolt was led by the aristocrats, medieval aristocrats, Nana Sahib, Lakshmi and others. For what they lost? They lost their, you know, estates. They lost their pension. For that, the revolt. There is nothing called Ulugulan there. Then Mopila rebellion, you know, Mopalas, Muslim agricultural laborers, exploited by Hindu landlords, right, in the Malabar coast, Kerala, 1921. So there's an agrarian crisis. Just now we talked about Indigo Revolt, right? Indigo Revolt has nothing to do with an independent, you know, state. Okay. Very interestingly, in the Indigo rebellion, you remember what I told you in the class? The peasantry of Indigo Rebellion, they declared that they were the you know, people, they were the citizens of the queen. They are the you know, subjects of the queen. Subjects of the queen. Queen of England. Right. So these three, I mean, 1857 revolt, Mopila Rebellion, Indigo Revolt, has nothing to do with the old Okay. Go to the next question. With reference to the history of India, consider the following pages. This is difficult. I am sure what the questions I told difficult. This is one amongst them. Aurang. What is Aurang? See the alternative given here, matching given here is what? In charge of treasury of the state. Treasury of the state. That is absolutely wrong. Aurangs were manufacturing depots. Are you understanding? I have given you in the explanation. Kindly see that. Aurangs were manufacturing units. Local manufacturing depots in medieval India. So, alternative one is wrong. Second one, Banyan. 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 Banyas, yes, definitely. Banyas were business community. We are not denying. But here what is given? Indian agent of the East India Company. 
this i doubt it why because banias were business you know communities okay they acted also as agents but you know this is doubtful statement why because okay it's a question whether they really acted as the agents of the east india company or not they were into money lending they were into brokering okay to the best of you know our knowledge here they never acted as the agents of the east india company got the point so i don't say two also is the you know right matching okay mirasi das designated revenue payers to the state actually that is a wrong way of setting the question my dear mirasi dar was exempted from taxes what are the mirasi lands mirasi lands were the lands given for professionals get the point for the first time mirasi system started in medieval india okay if you remember i told you there were hereditary functionaries hereditary village functionaries ayagars or ayangars you can call them either way these ayagars or ayangars for discharging the service right they were given rent free lands you don't have to pay tax rent free lands strictly speaking okay mirasi dars were exempted from tax like right. but what happened was in modern india under the rajatwari system you know british introduced rajatwari system in modern india these mirasi dars were asked to pay the tax right designated revenue payer to the state if you apply this in medieval in a modern india the statement is valid okay so the point here is that the way they have said the question is not right but answer shall be okay only 3 okay definitely mirasi dar spit tax 3 shall be the answer okay banian i told you in some textbooks it is given banias you know company agents but i doubt the statement i told you okay so the choice here is 3 is the right choice okay fine next question which of the following statements correctly explain the impact in industrial revolution on india in industrial revolution on india during the first half of the 19th century impact in industrial revolution okay on india okay see the alternative indian handicrafts were ruling okay definitely is because of industrial revolution in england indian handicrafts definitely ruling it okay. you remember i told you england required england required raw materials in bulk quantities right same england also required markets for selling its products so alternative indian handicrafts were ruling unless england destroys the indian handicrafts industry england not in a position to create market for its own industry as simple as that unless england destroys india's handicraft industries it can provide market for its own goods so a is definitely the answer here indian handicrafts were ruined how about the other alternatives b c d machines were introduced in the indian textiles industry in the large number never it happened never english introduced any machines in indian textiles industry got the point my dear our textiles industry domestic household industry are you understanding we never had big machines we had hand looms with that we used to weave get the point so there is nothing called you know machines here used third one is what c railway lines were laid in many parts of the country 
agreed railway lines were laid but for what that was for exploitation of the resources of india get the point it has nothing to do with okay the question as such in industrial evolution and railways they are not closely connected then heavy duties were imposed on the imports of british manufacture that is ridiculous british never collected any taxes on the items coming to india from england got the point whereas they levied heavy taxes every year on an average 10% on indian goods not on goods imported from england so right alternative is a a is the answer for this question next question with reference to the book okay desir katha written by sakram ganesh deshka during the freedom struggle consider the following statement great you know novelist okay and even a dramatist okay sakram den ganesh deshkar right of bengal okay it warned against the colonial states hippocratic hypnotic conquest of the mind hypnotic conquest of the mind it inspired the performance of swadeshi street plays and folk songs the use of the desh by deshkar was in the specific context of the region bengal all the three statements are correct and you can also note down one thing okay. deshkar he used the word swaraj very much inspired by shivaji maharaj okay shivaji used the word swaraj in the context of the history of marathas whereas deshkar used this word in the context of bengal you can say one of the earliest thinkers who gave a call for swadeshi you know what is swadeshi will of the people to prevail we the bengali our word shall prevail in our land got the point so answer is 1 2 3 all the three statements are correct then the next question the gandhi irwin pact included which of the following it was a pact you know the first round table conference was boycotted by congress party right the ones participated in the round table conference tej bahadur sapru shivai chintamani okay mr jaik particularly sapru and jaikar they mediated between gandhi and irwin because of that the pact was signed the purpose was to bring at any cost congress party to the second round table conference right that's why you see here invitation first one you see number one invitation to congress to participate in the round table conference agreed is because of the pact as per the pact gandhi left for london to take part in the second round table conference second one withdrawal of ordinances promulgated in connection with the civil disobedience movement irwin agreed for that also acceptance of gandhi's suggestion for enquiry into police excesses this was not accepted by irwin for irwin after all police had done their duty that's the point no question of conducting inquiry into police excesses because people were revolting it is the duty of the police to handle the situation so irwin governor general not accepted the third thing then release of only those prisoners who were not charged with violence got the point irwin agreed for this no problem all the congress you know leaders and the workers congress party workers whoever that were arrested would be released except see this except those found guilty of violence 
this particular wording, except those found guilty of violence, refers to Bhagat Singh, Rajguru, Sukhade. Because they were already, they were already sentenced. They were, judgment was pronounced on them, okay, that they were to be hanged on March 25th. Remember, pact was signed on March 5th. Bhagat Singh, Rajguru, Sukhadev, they were to be hanged on March 25th. Pact was March 5th. So Irvin told categorically to Gandhi not to ask for the release of these three. Okay. So statements here, my dear. Number one, valid. Number two, valid. Okay. Number four, valid. Third one, acceptance of Gandhi's decision. That is not correct. So one, two, four. Okay. That is answer B is right. Clear? Right. Go to the next question. Vital A Vidwam Shek. Okay. The Vital A Vidwam Vital Vidwam Shek. The first monthly journal to have the untouchable people as its target audience was published by Gopal Baba Walangkar. Okay. Gopal Baba Walangkar. Baba Walangkar. Otherwise, Gopal Baba Walangkar. You can also call him by the other name. Gopala Krishna. His other name, Gopala Krishna. Okay. Lived for 60 years, 1840-1900. He was a pioneer, pioneer in the movement against untouchability, particularly in the Bombay presidency. Okay. Movement against untouchables. Okay. He published this journal. What journal? Vital Vidwam Shek. This he published in 1889. Okay. It was a journal in support of the cause, okay, cause of eradicating untouchability. This journal was to promote okay, awareness on the evil untouchability. Eradication. It is for eradication of the evil untouchability. He also founded another journal. You can note down that also. Okay. Gopal Baba Walangkar. He also founded another journal called Hindu Dharma Darpan. Okay. He also founded the journal Hindu Dharma Darpan. This he founded in the year 1894. Okay. Answer is A. Jyotiba Phule. Phule was more against, you know, questioning Brahmin domination rather than untouchability. Of course, he wisely his protest against untouchability, but Phule was more connected with questioning the domination of the priest. Then you see Mohandas Karamchit Pule, Jyotiba Pule founded such a Shodak Samaj, right? Criticizing Vedas and all that. Mohandas Karamchit Gandhi, Gandhi also started Harijan movement. Okay. Then Bhimrao Ramji Ambedkar, Baba Sahib Bhimrao Ambedkar, okay, B.R. Ambedkar. Ambedkar, you know, his fight all along his life. All through his life, his fight was for Mahas against untouchability. But Ambedkar was a late entry. Even before Dr. Ambedkar, you have Gopal Baba Walandakar, right? Mahatma Jyotiba, V.M. Shinde. Last, I should say, Dr. Ambedkar, chain in the chain of the reformers. You know, Dr. Ambedkar founded the journals, okay, Mukhnayak, Dumb Man. With the financial support coming from Maharaja of Kualapu, Maharaja of you know, Sahu Maharaj, support coming from Sahu Maharaj, he founded the journals Muknayak, M U K H. Muknayak. And another journal okay, he also founded, Bahishkrita Bharat. That means excommunicated. He was thrown out by his group. 
Barat. Right. So answer is A is the answer for this question. Right. Next one is what? With reference to the religious history of India. India. Okay, the framing, I don't know why UPSC is committing this type of mistakes. India. Consider the following statements. Stavira Vadins belong to Mahayana Buddhism. Okay, that is totally a wrong statement. You remember in the first split in Buddhism, dividing Buddhism into okay, Mahayana, dividing Buddhism into pro changer and no changer. Who are the pro changers? You see the second statement. Lokotravadin sect was an offshoot of Mahasangika. Mahasangika's pro changes. They always wanted change. Change in the rules of Sangha, change in the concepts of Buddhism. Okay. That's why you see the third sentence the deification of Buddha, that means making Buddha God, by Mahasangika's fostered Mahayana Buddhism, undoubtedly. Mahayana Buddhism, the extended form of Mahasangika sect. Okay, so statement two and three are right. You mean Lokotravadin sect was the result of Mahasangika? Yes, it was a subsect within Mahasangikas. When you go to the first one, Staviravadins belong to Mahayana Buddhism. That is a totally a wrong statement. Okay, Staviravadin or Theravadin, you can call them otherwise Thera. Theravadins means they, the, the ones who respect the elders. Thera means elderly. The ones who respect the elders, they can't accept change. Theravadins were no changes. Okay, note down the point. They are highly conservative. In a way, Theravada school responsible for Hinayana. The original form of Buddhism, conservative form of Buddhism. Right. So two and three are valid. Answer is B. Okay. Statement one is not correct. If the question is about statement given, okay, which are correct, is are correct means two and three are correct. Answer is B. Go to the next question. Here you have ancient history. When it comes to ancient history, what are the questions given? See, they have not given any question on dance, music, dance, <laughs> dance, music, okay, art, architecture, painting, not a single question. Isn't it, my boys? Okay. People are studying dance forms. Okay. To the extent they perform the dance. Okay. UPSC has altogether a different type of music set for you to perform in the hall. Okay. Not expected at all. Okay. Not expected. I, that's why I keep telling when I am teaching ancient India, people are finding fault with me, sir. Why are you taking so much time for ancient India? Yeah. You see nine questions. Last before year also. Okay. Medieval India. Okay. Put it together. This time you have got more ancient and medieval than modern. Freedom struggle, freedom struggle. Where are the questions? Only one freedom struggle question. Okay. Generally that is the pattern when we address it in the class. Okay. But you know, you have to be very careful. You have to be you know, thorough with everything. Get the point. So in ancient India, what is the first question given? With reference to the period of the Gupta dynasty in ancient India, towns, look at this, my dear, towns, Gantasala. Where is Gantasala, my dear? Okay, Andhra Pradesh, right? Krishna district, Andhra Pradesh. Okay, Kadura and Chau. Okay, this you know, Gantasala and Khadura, remember, they are the two major ports, P-O-R-T-S, given here. 
ports handling foreign trade this is the right answer for this there are the ports on the southeast coast east coast in the trade with southeast asia southeast asia okay gantasala kalu let me tell you gantasala a major center for buddhism also important buddhist pilgrimage center okay you can say gantasala pilgrimage center because that is where sajiva stupa the stupa built on relic of the buddha form okay gantasala definitely important place okay but more than that okay gantasala okay kadura and you know chaul they are known for trade trade and commercial importance so the choice one is the right answer they were not the capitals of any powerful kingdoms places of exercise to stone art and architecture that's also not correct important buddhist pilgrimage center only gantasala not kadura and chaul chaul in maharashtra is a popular port just in the konkan coast so the answer is appropriate answer is ports handling foreign trade right next with reference to the scholars right and literatures of ancient india consider the following statement panini is associated with pushyamitra shunga that is a wrong statement some textbooks are writing it like that that is absolutely wrong my dear panini comes under the 5th century bc 5th century bc before christ right panini you know the great grammarian sanskrit grammarian who wrote astadhyayi in sanskrit grammar right astadhyayi belong to 5th century bc right whereas pushyamitra shunga okay he comes under 2nd century ad are you understanding 2nd century bc i am sorry not ad why because the last of the mauryas brihadrat brihadrat was killed by pushyamitra shunga chief commander the last of the so there is a gap there of nearly 300 years got the point so panini and pushyamitra they are not connected statement is wrong amarasimha is associated with harshavardhan this is also wrong amarasimha belonged to the court of chandragupta to amarasimha the great jain scholar you know amarasimha wrote amara kosha the first dictionary in sanskrit language amarasimha wrote amara kosha that too in the court of chandragupta vikramaditya so second statement is wrong kalidas is associated with chandragupta too definitely that is right with which of the statements given above is are correct okay only third one is correct answer is c 1 and 2 are wrong as a matter of fact you know navaratnas kalidasa amarasimha they all come under vararuchi hey dhanvantari hmm. all come under vishnu you know shipanaka shenku betala battu gatagarpaka king varahani hira they all come under the court of chandragupta too right of the guptas next question consider the following events in the history of india okay what is the sequence here my dear this is a very tricky question very tricky question of the four dynasties given here you see that too they have taken the name of the king if the dynasty means you can very easily arrange it 
where they mentioned the name of the kings. So, dynasty plus a king. You have to arrange them in the chronological order. Got the point? Okay. Rise of Pratihars under King Boja. Okay. Establishment of Pallava power under Mahendra Varman. Pallavas, they established their power under Mahendra Varman in 6th century. That means, you see, when Pulakesin, remember, Pulakesin two of the Western Chalukyas defeated Mahendra Varman. Got the point. So, first here, Okay, this is the first statement, right? Then you see King Bhojaraj and Gopal, okay? Establishment of Chola ruler by Parantaka, I will come to that one. Pala dynasty founded by Gopal, this is the second statement. Gopal, the founder of the Pala dynasty, he was an elected king. This happened much before Bhojaraj coming to power. Are you understanding? Pala dynasty, dynasty was, dynasty wise, okay, it was founded much earlier than Pratihas. So here the answer, you know, second one is this. Third one is Bojaraj. Okay, Pratihas, Palas, you know, they are all contemporaries, right? But Bhoja came to power much later than that of Gopal, right? And after that, Parantek, Parantek the last, Parantek, you know, in the ninth century. This is, okay, this is seventh century, okay. This is eighth century, that's all. So answer is what? Answer must be, okay, two, okay, two, four, Two, four, one, three. This is the answer. Okay, three. I mean, Parantak, the last of the Parantak of the Cholas, he is the last amongst the four. Okay, he is the last amongst the four given there. So, answer is this. Two, one, two, four, one, three is the answer. Okay. This is definitely a critical question. Right. Next. <clears throat> Which of the following phrases Defines the nature of the hundi, hundi generally referred to in the sources of post Harsha period. Hundi system without say bill of exchange. Right? In medieval times, okay, you had business communities, right? Mahajans, okay, even for that matter, Baniyas, Mahajans, Agarwals, Baniyas, Shahukars. They are all into this business. What is this business? Okay. In a way, it's just like our drafts. Okay. Demand draft. Do you see this? Okay. Very interesting. Bill of exchange. Bill of exchange is just like that of demand draft. AD. Okay. This started in medieval India. Okay. In medieval India, even before European merchants came to India. It became very popular with European merchants. You deposit your money, take a note. You can exchange the note wherever you want to exchange, they'll give you back money. The purpose, it is not safe to carry money. Get the point. In medieval times, there's no security for the merchants and travelers. The guides used to you know, attack and kill them for money's sake. When you carry the you know, letter, okay, that means bill. You can exchange it anywhere you want to. Get the point. So, this system of bills of exchange, what we call it as, it became very popular in medieval times. Okay. Other alternatives, advisory issued by the king to his subordinates, that is not Hindi. There's no word called Hindi that way. A diary maintained by the daily accounts, right? An order from the feudal lord to his subordinates, these are all nonsensical. Hundi means bill of exchange. It's just like demand draft system. Right. Next question. Which of the following phrases defines the nature of the Hundi? Generally opposed to the source in the post-order period. Okay. Yes, we have done it. 
Next is, who among the following rulers advised his subjects through his inscriptions? Whoever praises his religious sect or blames the other sects out of excess of devotion to his own sect with the view of glorifying his own sect, he rather injures his own sect very severely. This is the popular statement of this is the popular statement of King Ashok, Samrat Ashok. Ashok, while expressing his dharma, understand, what is dharma? Principles of dharma. Okay. Principles of dharma, I told you, satya, ahimsa, samyama, tolerance, sankshema, welfare. Ashok talks about this in his inscriptions. Samudra Gupta never exhibited, no, no king for that matter. Samudra, Harshavardhan, Krishnadev Rai, they are not a match to Ashok. Get the point. Ashok undoubtedly great. H.G. Wells calling Ashok, you remember, a moon in the galaxy of the stars. The only king who gave up war after victory. Okay. Samudra Gupta, he followed Vaishnavism. You have Allahabad inscription talking great about Samudra. But nowhere it is said that Samudra, you know, spoke, you know, language in this language, in this language like this. Okay, Samudra uttered sentences like this. Then Harsha Vardhana. Harsha known for his philanthropy, but not so secular like Ashok. And Krishnadevrai most. So the right alternative is Ashok is the right answer for the question. Right. Next. With reference to the history of India, consider the following pages. Okay. Bilsa, my dear, Bilsa, Madhya Pradesh, that's absolutely right. It comes very close to Vidisha. Vidisha, again Madhya Pradesh, MP. You know, Bilsa, now it is part of Vidisha. Vidisha, major center for Vaishnavism, Bhagavatism. Okay. If you remember in history, you come across a Greek ambassador, Greek ambassador Hilodorus. Hilodorus, he installed a pillar, you call it as Garuda pillar, G A R U D. At Vidisha. This comes under Madhya Pradesh. This is right. Dwara Samudra, Maharashtra. That is totally wrong. Dwara Samudra in Karnataka. Okay, Karnataka. Okay. Dwara Samudra, capital city for Hoyasala dynasty. They ruled Karnataka. Capital city, okay, Halevid. Halevid, you can otherwise also, you know, there is other place called Halevid, Dwar Samudra. They are all capital cities for Hoyasalas, Karnataka. Then Girinagar, otherwise called Girnas, Gujarat. Okay, this is right. Okay. Staneshwar, Staneshwar comes under, you know, Haryana, not UP. You remember Harshavardhan, Pushyabudhi dynasty, their caps, capital city is Taneshwar. Okay. Kanoj, UP. Okay. Kanoj comes under UP, not Staneshwar. Staneshwar comes under Haryana. So this is wrong. What are the two ones that are rightly matched? One and three. Okay. There is one and three. A is the answer. Okay. Bilsa, Madhya Pradesh and Girnar, Gujarat. Right. Fine. Next question. With reference to the cultural history of India, consider the following. Parivrajaka. Okay. Parivrajaka means okay, the great priest okay, with high status. Okay. Parivrajaka. He, you know, who is highly respected. This is the right meaning here. Shamana, 
Shamana means wanderer. You know, Shamana's school of thought in ancient India they always criticizing the Vedic rituals. They go around places. They move from one place to the other. That way they are called wanderers, Shamanas. Okay? Critics of Vedic religion. Parivrajaka, definitely a great priest of high status. Understand? Mahaparivrajaka means great saintly. Right? Status-wise, higher. Upasika means follower of Buddhism. I told you all these things. So this is right. Okay. Only one is correctly matched. Only correct one is one is correctly matched. This one also reminiscent and a wanderer. One and three is Shamana, priest with high status. That is not correct. Okay. It comes to one and two. One and three is the answer. This is the answer. Parivrajaka okay, means reminiscent and wanderer. That's okay, accepted. Okay. Shamana was not a priest. Are you understanding? Shamana was not a priest. Okay. Shamanas, they were never into Vedic religion. They were never into Vedic religion. Okay. Parivrajaka is right. Reminiscent and wanderer. They move from one place to the other. Okay. Shamanas were never a priest. Seminars were not priests. So here one is right, third one is also right. One and three is the right answers. Answer is B. B. Okay. Clear. Next question. With reference to the cultural history, which one of the following is correct description of the term? Paramita. Okay. Pregna Paramitra Sutra, remember? Paramita Sutras. Pregna Paramitra Sutra. That had become the basis of Mahayana Buddhism. Paramita means it's the set of principles for you to lead an enlightened life, to get knowledge. Right? That's why you see philosophical schools that did not accept the authority of Vedas. Okay, this is wrong. Perfection whose attainment led to the Bodhisattva. This is absolutely right. Perfections whose attainment would lead you to Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva means enlightened. Okay. So Paramitas, they deal with the path of enlightenment. Path to enlightenment. Okay. Powerful merchants get absolutely wrong. Okay. Next one is what? The earliest Dharma Shastra text written in a poristic. That means a sutra style. They are not Dharma Shastras texts. Dharma Shastras, you know, they were written in the post Mauryan times. Okay. Manu Dharma Shastra, Parashara Smuti, Narada Smuti, Egnavalkya Smuti, right? So Dharma Shastras means they are Brahmanical. Get the point. Whereas Paramitas, they deal with Buddhism. Get the point. So third one is the right answer. Get the point. So, Answer is three. Clear. Next question. That's over. Here there is another question actually that figures. Okay. The difference between Gandhi and Karl Marx. I don't know why it has not been included here. The difference between Gandhi and Marx with regarding, you know, Economic determinism, right? Class struggle. Gandhi never accepted the idea of class struggle. Why? Because class struggle is very violent. Okay. Economic determinism. Economic determinism is one of the important factors. But economic determinism alone cannot explain the social change. Got the point. Gandhi differs with Marx in three things. What are the three things given there? Class struggle. Yes, Gandhi differs. Economic determinism. Gandhi differs. Okay. There, another alternative is also given. Okay. Stateless society. Gandhi agrees with Marx. Why? Because he, that's the one thing. First one, you know, I think to the best of my memory, that's given in the alternative. The question is not given here, but the question is given there. Stateless society. Gandhi is basically an anarchist. 
what is anarchism destroy the existing one you will create a better one got the point when you destroy something the new one will be formed that would be perfect it does not mean go on destroying no okay gandhi an anarchist in sense he never wanted state why because the state uses power force okay why not do you have a society without the state using force okay gandhi was for a society without you know state same is the case with marx marx also 